Love is patient. Love is kind. Love sees all. But love is blind. Hello indie game fans, love is in the air with Valentine's Day coming up this week, so there are a couple of lovey-dovey games to look forward to, most of which have their own spin on things, so the top 10 best indie games of the week starts with Philophobia The Fear of Love, a precision platformer set in the depths of hell. Walk your way through the 5 stages of grief as you bezel demons and make your broken heart whole again. Love is pain, love is life going down the drain. This is from game developer and fellow YouTuber Tim Ruswick, who runs the Game Dev Underground channel and has quite an interesting art style. The usage of platforms which obstruct your line of sight does cast shadows in interesting patterns, giving it quite the sense of style. Seems suitably devious and challenging in the platforming and could go into the greats in the splatformer subgenre. Going from a depressing take on heartbreak and love to a whimsical and wonderful one, Star Cross is an arcadey shoot 'em up where you play as two characters, passing a star back and forth between each other, damaging enemies that get caught in the way. An interesting take on the bullet hell shooter, by removing your ability to directly fire projectiles, positioning then becomes of utmost importance. A split controller allows you to play single player, but this, obviously, seems designed for co-op play. Powers of yours. How did they manifest? I assure you, I didn't bargain with demons. Inquisitors know better than to believe words. What of Edric? What will you do with Valeria? She was just evading Mayla's frenzy. Let's make this very clear. You will do as I command. I love action RPGs in the vein of Diablo, since the hacking, slashing and looting always feels great. So I was pleasantly surprised to find out that Wilson, Lords of Mayhem, was releasing in 1.0 after quite a while in early access. She'd never have come here. You saw the apparitions, didn't you? Soul magic. Your path isn't theirs, not anymore. This will feature a full 3-act campaign with no restrictive class systems but with 21 subclasses for you to experiment with. So more along the lines of Path of Exile in design. However, the UI does very much look like Diablo 3 but the art and environments are gorgeous and a no-brainer for fans of the genre. Some of you have pointed out that there is some controversy since it was kickstarted with the promise of an open-world action RPG but the final game ended up being linear so a lesson learned, but should be great nonetheless. He's possessed by a demon. Here they come! Unleash the storm now! Free yourself from the guilt. You owe them nothing. There is no giving up on family. If you love gorgeous hand-drawn art and animation, Luna The Shadow Dust will be one to check out this week, a point-and-click adventure game where you explore an ancient tower at the edge of the world and have to trace back memories of old. According to the developers, this has traditional frame-by-frame -frame animation with 12 frames per second 3 layers per frame, and with over 250 animations and 20 minutes of cutscenes, this should be a real treat for the eyes. Puzzles here are all self-contained, so no backtracking or having to pick up obscure items and carry them from one place to the next, so more puzzle box-like in design. Still. Looks like a wonderful animated movie-like experience, so one to check out.
The first paid DLC for Dead Cells is titled The Bad Seed, where you explore a host of plant-based locations like the Arboretum and the Swamp. Of course, new enemies, weapons and more will be available, with more of their signature gorgeous pixel art. Developer Evo Empire is actually credited in this, which is a spin-off studio of Motion Twin, where members who wanted to continue to work on Dead Cells were allowed to, or the main studio itself is exploring new projects. Excited to see what is next from both of these teams. Just a quick note, if you are new here and enjoyed the video so far, be sure to subscribe and check out the Discord channel while you are at it. Here's to more indie gaming coverage, so back to the video. I've got you now. Whoop. More of you. Damn, I'm good. Oh, hi, it's the Necronator here. Just enjoying some Necronator dead wrong in my 5,000 square foot evil lair. If you pay attention to this video, I'm going to show you how you can be as successfully evil as I am. Necronator Dead Wrong is a self-described micro-RTS with deck-building elements where you summon hordes of the undead and have to destroy all humans. Necronator Dead Wrong is a surprisingly fresh and innovative blend of deck-building and micro-real-time strategy. But what most people don't get is that it's also knowledge. Like Einstein said, true knowledge exists in knowing that you know nothing. And I do know that you know nothing. However, I would describe this as a reverse tower defense where you are the one generating the units who move on a path to attack. Throwing just the right combination of troops and using your active skills at the right time in order to ensure victory. You're going to learn so much about being a supervillain from Necronator Dead Wrong and it's all completely 100% free. Oh, they do have to buy it. Now you see, I was thinking ads, just all through it. That's fairly evil, isn't it? We can't do that. No, we're not doing that? All right, okay, all right, got it. I do like the pixel art of the units, but this launches in early access with only one out of five planned commanders to choose from, where each is supposed to get their own narrative campaigns. Regardless, love these sorts of games, so excited for this. What am I saying? I covered Atok the Desolation when I was looking for upcoming turn-based tactics and strategy games, and this launches in early access this week. This is a tactics game where you lead a party of adventurers through the ruins of an ancient world, fighting off enemies and managing your party. Combat takes place on a hex grid with environmental interactions such as pushing enemies off cliffs or into spikes. The art and inventory system looks pretty inspired by Tucker's Dungeon to me, which is not a bad thing, with a procedurally generated world and a run-based gameplay structure. Speaking of Valentine's Day, Table Manor's physics-based dating game sets you up on a romantic date in a restaurant where you have to wine and dine and hopefully try to impress your date. However, controlling a clumsy, disembodied pen, physics shenanigans ensue.
We'll see if this manages to join that top flight of comedy physics games like Surgeon Simulator, Good Simulator and I Am Bread, but based on what I have seen so far, this has a pretty great shot. If you love gorgeous platformers, Evergate is definitely a title to check out. Journey through the afterlife and wield your soul flame to get through obstacles in your way. This is a puzzle action platformer centered around crystals, where breaking different crystals have different effects. While puzzle platformers generally allow you to think and take your time, this instead has elements of action and timing, with an art style that does remind me just a little bit of Ori and the Blind Forest. Super promising and should be excellent. Developer Shiro Games certainly has an interesting catalogue, from the journey through gaming history with the Evil Land series, the excellent 4X RTS Northgard, and now a multiplayer co op action game in Darksburg. A zombie outbreak has occurred in the town of Darksburg and a band of misfit adventurers, comprising of a nun, a gourmet, a bounty hunter and a wolfman must band together to survive. Think Left 4 Dead, but from an isometric RTS perspective and you get the idea. Left 4 Dead is one of my all-time favourite games, so this immediately appeals to me, and while the main mode is PvE, there is a PvP mode as well where there are even special Revenant characters. The action looks fantastic, so hopefully this brings some of that L4D fun to an audience who does not like first-person shooters, taking the number one spot. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe, check out the recommended playlist or the best pick for you, and I will see you after the jump.